Well, hello. Thanks for coming back to check out another video. So, we are here today to sit down and talk about my makeup basket. I always want to call it a monthly makeup basket because I guess that alliteration, you know, it just sounds really nice. I don't do shop my stashes monthly. I just kind of do them when I feel the need when I want that refresh in my life. So I feel like I got a lot of good use out of the products that I picked for last month. So I'm ready here to dive into this basket of products with you guys. Hopefully that sounds interesting. In the description box, I will leave my Shop My Stash playlist just in case you were interested in catching up on that. Like if you really enjoy that style of content. In the description box, I will also leave the video to this palette bingo that I did because this is a out of the box kind of eye look, I don't know. I don't know if I actually like it, but that's the risk you run with palette bingos, right? So either way, I will leave chapters as well down below so that you can skip around if you want to, because I know maybe not all of us are into like base makeup or, you know, things like that. Maybe all you want to see is, you know, the cheek products. So chapters will be available. I am not going to pick out eyeshadows for this shot my stash because I am starting to do project level up and pan those eyeshadows. So that kind of like fills that need for like shop my stash eyeshadow palettes, you know? And then of course, if I do wanna reach for anything throughout the month, like I'm just gonna pull it out of my drawers. So again, without any further rambling, let's get into this makeup basket. All right, so let's start off with base products. So I have two primers. I have a NYX, the Marshmallow Primer. This is what I've been using as just a pore primer within my T-zone. I do like the, what this offers. I don't think that it's like amazing. It's not the best pore filling primer that I've ever tried. Now, to be fair, this is not marketed as a pore filling primer. That's just how I typically use it. But I do feel like it does make my makeup hold up really well. I feel like since using this, I've noticed less like breaking down of my makeup on like my smile lines and around my nose and things like that. So I do enjoy having that in. I also want to pull this out from Milk Makeup. So this is their Illuminating Blur Stick. Now, if I'm not mistaken, these blur sticks are marketed as like pore filling primers. I have never used this. I picked this up, I want to say maybe a month or two ago at TJ Maxx. Um, it still feels really creamy. Like it feels nice. It has like the little plastic cap on it and I can't get that off. But yeah, this is a brand new product, never used it before. So if you have tried this out, either this one or I think they have like a matte one, let me know your thoughts of it down below. Okay, I'm actively trying to finish off a foundation within my collection. However, I don't really like that foundation on its own. It just, I don't know, it's it just doesn't feel right, but it's not that it feels wrong. Like it's not like heavy on the skin. It just It's just not a foundation that offers what I want it to. You know what I mean? So I have been bringing this in to mix in with that foundation and that has made the world of a difference. It just makes it have a little bit more coverage to it and I just feel like it looks a little bit more glowy on my skin. So either way, this foundation is from The Ordinary. This is their serum foundation. I get mine in the shade 1.1 N. Uh, I looked online at Ulta. I don't think that they carry this anymore. I feel like they are discontinuing it and it was something that just came out this year if I'm not mistaken. So this is like a very serum -y foundation like I think you can hear. Yeah, um, so it's very liquidy. I have never tried this on its own. I just pulled this out because I was like, you know what? The Lancome foundation that I'm using, again, not enough coverage and it is like a little bit on like the thicker side. So I thought let's just try mixing these two together and see what we think. I really did end up falling in love with it. It's like what I have on my face today. So I just figured I might as well pull this into the shop my stash and see how much use I can get on this. All right, let's do powder. So loose powder. I typically like to use a loose powder here and like on like the jawline and things like that just to help blush and bronzer and highlighter blend out a little bit better. And then I will use pressed powder like to set my concealer and then do the T-zone. So last month I had pulled in the one from Beauty Bakery. I love that so much. It's such a good loose setting powder. I have this one from Rare Beauty. This is just um, their setting powder. I think they only have this. It's not like they have a variety of variations of loose setting powder, but I do have the light shade. This has a little bit of pinkness to it. I did use it today. I used most of these products today uh, to set down my face. I want to just give this a good solid month of use and see do I like this or the Beauty Bakery one better because I don't really feel like I need to have a variety of loose setting powders within my collection. Like I just want to search and hunt down and find that holy grail one. 
I have to say like initial first, this isn't like really a first impression. This has gotten used before in my collection. It's just been a while since I've pulled it out. However, using it today, like first impression, it is a little bit more pink, whereas the Beauty Bakery one is a translucent powder. So that might be like one reason why I wouldn't want to repurchase this is because I do feel like you can see a little bit of that pinkness coming through. All right, so let's talk about the two pressed powders that I am going to bring in. So the first one, I think I had this in for the last shot, my stash. Now, technically, this is a matte foundation powder from Sephora. So this is just called the Matte Perfection Powder. I get mine in the shade 08 Fair Neutral. I absolutely love this. I don't know if the ring light is going to glare this out too much. But in the last uh, shot, my stash, I showed you guys like I had a really good bit of pan on this. I have since repressed it and I did hit baby pan on this today doing my makeup. I love this loose, or this loose powder. I love this pressed powder to set down eyeshadow primer, concealer, do like the smile lines and everything around my nose. It is just a holy grail. I am planning on picking up another one of these when the Sephora sale, like the VIB, VIB sale starts happening. It just does not make my look, skin look cakey in any way. And it's a really great pressed powder, like actual foundation as well. So, but I did pick up this from NYX. Now this is their HD finishing powder. This is the banana one. I haven't even like opened this and taken like the plastic off of it. So I can't like actually open it for you. But I've heard so many people rave about this and say that this is amazing to like set down concealer and things like that. So I just wanted to give this a go. I feel like this is always sold out at my Ulta. So I think that that kind of added to the wanting to buy this is like, well, it must be good because it's always sold out. So we will bring this in and try it out. Okay, last base products are just setting sprays. So this first one is from CoverGirl. This is the Clean Fresh Prep and Set Water Mist. I really like to put down my primers and then I will take a mist like this that's a little bit more hydrating because we are in the drier months of the year and I will spray this over top of my powders and then press it in with my sponge. And I just feel like it, it just makes my skin feel better, you know? I don't think that it really helps the longevity of my makeup or does anything like that, but it just makes my skin feel better. So I will keep, you know, doing that as part of my makeup routine. But the actual setting spray that I'm pulling in is from Urban Decay. This is the All Nighter Setting Spray. This is my hands down favorite setting spray. I really do feel like that setting spray does help the longevity of my makeup. And it also takes down the powderiness of my makeup because like I said, I'm going in with a loose powder and a pressed powder and I just feel like I want all of that to kind of meld together a little bit better. All right, let's talk about bronzers. I have a cream bronzer and a powder bronzer. So the powder bronzer is the same one that I had in the last uh, Shop My Stash. I'm just trying to finish this off. So this is from Nabla. It's part of their skin glazing line. This is the lightest bronzer that they have. It's in the shade Ambra. I don't know if you can tell down in there, but I don't have very much. It's just like hanging out around the edges. I'm trying to you know, use this up successfully before the end of the year because I would just like to have another bronzer out of my collection. And I really do think that I could have that finished off. So then I'm also gonna bring in my cream bronzer from Milk Makeup. This is, I think they only have two shades of this and I believe this is the lighter of the two shades. So this is the shade Baked. I am not going to roll this up all the way for you guys, but I'm pretty sure you've seen like other people with this bronzer. I love that this is a stick and it's just so easy to like draw it onto your face and then blend it out with the beauty sponge. So greatly do enjoy this. This is a product that I do need to hit the lead on though because I think this is like our third year together, but it doesn't smell off. It doesn't give me any type of reaction. So I'm just gonna happily continue to use it. All right, so let's talk about some blushes. I do have some cream and some powder blushes. So this is still in its box. This is from the brand Seraphine Botanicals. This is the Rhubarb and Rose Creamy Lip and Cheek Palette. So my bestie was showing me that she had this in her makeup collection and I was like, oh, that looks so pretty. So of course, Haley had to run right out and grab one, but look at how cute, I don't know, it might be washing this out, but there's like a bunch of like little flower detailing over here. It's just really cute packaging. And then if I open it up, it's a little hard to open. If I open it up, this is what it looks like on the inside. It's just a really lovely, like, assortment of pinky, kind of like more cool tones in the middle shades. I just feel like this is going to be a lot of fun to pull out. I don't know if I'll use this on my lips. I don't think I used, like, when I was panning my The Bomb How About Them Apples palette, I don't believe I used any of those on my lips just because, like, I have lip products, you know what I mean? When I buy 
cream palettes like this I'm thinking more of them like blushes so but I am curious to pull this out I do want to try to at least reach for every shade one time in here because like I said I have not used this yet and then potentially this could be something that I want to pan next year because there's only seven grams of total product in here which I feel like for the price tag isn't like really worth it like maybe if you were using this exclusively as a lip palette it would last longer but if you're using it as you know cream blush and lipstick like it's gonna go a lot quicker than the like 40 something dollar price tag I think this was uh clocking in at but either way let me swatch this out for you all right so here it is swatched out on my hand all five shades I do have to say it felt really lovely like very creamy when I dipped my fingers into it so I think that this is going to wear beautifully as a cream blush. I feel like it's not going to be like super greasy. I feel like these are going to be really impactful and just fun to play with. I feel like right now the two shades that I would be gravitating towards the most in the cooler like fall months uh, are these two center shades here. The other ones are very lovely pinky shades that I think I would get more use out of like in the springtime. Okay, so I have some powdered blushes here to talk about. So I think I am finally ready to start pulling out my more pinky brown kind of powder blushes. So I have this from Uden's Eye. This is part of their Alva, 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 Alva. I keep wanting to think that that V makes a W sound in Swedish, but I don't think that it does. Um, but it's their flower br blusher. This was in the shade Water Lily. I think this has been discontinued when they came out with their Solmana 2 collection. I think they got rid of some of these older blushes. But this is just a really pretty like pinky brown kind of shade. Like I said, I absolutely love it for this time of year. Even in the springtime, I feel like I get a lot of use out of these types of shades as well. But I absolutely love this blush on its own. I also love mixing it with other blushes. Just really fun and effortless to play with. And then I'm also going to bring back out my Hourglass palette. I was panning this for a long time this year. I only have these two blush products left in here, as you can see. And I do not have very much of this shade right here. I am contemplating trying to finish this off before the end of the year. I don't know if that's possible because as we all know, blush is just very deceptive and it, you know, takes forever to actually use it up. So let me give you some swatches of these. Now the both of these shadows or both of these shadows both of these shades are really pretty within this blush palette so this more like darker kind of purpley one is the shade surreal halo i am trying to like if i turn down the ring light i feel like it's too dark in here but then if i have it up like i do i feel like you can't really successfully see the swatches but this is the shade surreal halo which is the more like purpley one from the hourglass palette and then this brighter pink one is called Pure Effect. Now, Pure Effect, I don't get a lot of use out of because it is such a bubblegummy, like Barbie doll pink kind of blush. So I'm thinking about trying to franken that with some other blush within my collection. But I don't know. I have a lot of reservations about frankening products because I always seem to ruin things. Okay, so for highlighters, I do have two cream highlighters. So this first one is a Super Shock highlighter. This is in the shade Flute Punch from ColourPop. This is really pretty. Um, it's kind of like a golden highlighter. Oh, they're so creamy and nice. It's like a golden highlighter, but it has like a little bit of pinkness to it. It's very different from the um, other golden highlighter that I have from them, which would be from the Winnie the Pooh collection. But there it is on my hand, just really pretty. I just think that's gonna be a lot of fun to wear. Uh, with highlighters, I feel like with some of my other makeup, like especially blushes, I'm much more of like a seasonal person, but like with highlighters and things like that, I don't feel like I'm very much a seasonal person. So either way, uh, I'm saying that because I feel like golden highlighters aren't typically what a lot of people want to pull for right now. But my other cream highlighter to pull out is from Cover Effects. This is their custom uh, cover drops in the shade Moonlight. I had a whole bottle of this, I think sometime last year, and I ended up using it up completely and then when Ulta decided to stop carrying cover effects I decided to pick that up because they were discounting it out so I already know that I absolutely love this it's a beautiful uh, cream highlighter the liquid highlighters like this cover effects one the way that I personally like to wear them is since I like matte full coverage foundations I mix those liquid highlighters in with my foundation just to make it to where my skin is not like so flat and dull and like lifeless looking all right, let's talk about some powdered highlighters. So this first one is from Becca. This is the Vanilla Quartz Highlighter. I think I have went 
the whole year without touching this. I think it was like last winter, the last time I pulled this out. There's a swatch of it. It is a very pretty like icy kind of highlighter, but it's got some goldenness to it. So I feel like it'll pair really nicely with the Flute Punch uh, Super Shock Shadow, Super Shock Shadow, Super Shock Highlighter from ColourPop that I'm bringing in. And then I also want to bring in my Solmana Highlighter Palette. Again, this was discontinued when they came out with the Solmana 2 collection, but this is from Uden's Eye. So you do have four very lovely shades in here. You've got this like peachy kind of golden shade. This reminds me a lot of Mary Luminizer. Then you've got this white base shadow that has like a blue flip to it. Absolutely love this one. Then you've got a pink highlighter, which definitely has the most use. I have like a really big dip here in this corner. And then this one down here is probably my least used. Again, it's another white based highlighter, but it kind of has like a green yellow shift to it. So let me swatch these out for you. Okay, so here are the highlighters from Uden's Eye down here. This is the Becca one at the top. So there's the more like peachy one, then the one that has the blue shift, then the pink one, and then the one that has like the yellow green shift to it. Again, hopefully you can kind of see all that on camera. Maybe if we hold it this way, I'm not really sure. Okay, so I do have one eye product that I want to bring in. It's an eyeshadow. Well, it's a liquid eyeshadow. Um, so this is from REM Beauty. I am not quite sure what they are calling these. I think they're just called liquid eyeshadows. And I think this is the shade Science Fair, but I could be wrong. So either way, this is like the purpley blue one. And I have used this twice since picking it up. And it does have some like really pretty kind of silver and pinky glitters to it. Um, this is a very wet formula. And I feel like the last time I used it, I felt like I experienced a little bit of creasing with this on my eyes. So I just want to pull this out and see how I really feel about it. It is a really pretty shadow and it's the perfect time of year to pull out this kind of shade. This does give me very like wintry vibes. Okay, so lipsticks and lip glosses to wrap up this makeup basket, this shop my stash. So I do have like four, uh, well, three bullet lipsticks and then one liquid lipstick. So we'll do the liquid lipstick first. So this is from Rare Beauty. This is their lip souffle in the shade Fearless. This is just a little mini guy and I swear it just will not end. I keep thinking like, okay, this is the month because I do pull this out quite frequently behind the scenes to wear. Um, so I keep thinking like, all right, this is the month I'm going to finish it off. And then it's still hanging around, which I'm not upset about because I really do love this shade. I feel like this is my perfect kind of like nude shade. I just feel like it looks really well on my skin. Um, and the lip souffles from them, I think they are classified as a liquid lipstick, but they feel very like puffy, kind of like a marshmallow. And so they're super comfortable. They're not like drying in any way. And I think that they fade really nicely. Okay. So then I have two lipsticks from Bite Beauty. So this first one is just one of their amuse bouche lipsticks in the shade Sesame which looks like it's gonna be a really pretty kind of like brown shade. I've used this once, I think. It's like a pinky brown kind of shade. Really pretty. Um, I like the Bite Beauty formula. I think that they feel very comfortable. They're really soft and so I feel like, I don't know, it. they're really soft so they just go on nicely and wear nicely. So again, this is from Bite Beauty. This is one of their lip crowns, I think it was called, but this is in the shade Calvados, I think is how you say it. This is really a very intense kind of brown shade, but I think pairing it with this sesame shade is going to be quite lovely and really help to lighten it up, but I am going to try to wear it on its own and see how I feel about it. Okay, so then the final bullet lipstick I'm going to roll in. This is from Glam Light. This was part of the Michaela Pot 2 collection. Uh, so if I click this out, now there's no name on this whatsoever, but this was the lighter lipstick that she came out with because there were two lip kits. Um, I think this was called Lucky Charms, if I'm not mistaken. So this does kind of give me concealer lips because it is a very like light pink shade. It is right here on my hand. However, again, much like with this sesame shade, I just feel like this is the perfect kind of shade for me, not on its own, but to use to kind of tone down some of these darker, more intense lip colors that I feel a little bit uncomfortable in. Okay, so three lip glosses. So this first one is from NYX. This is one of their butter glosses. This is in the shade Madeline. As you can see in the tube there, this is just their 
standard like brown lip gloss. I really love these butter glosses. I think they are so comfortable and they do feel like at least to me a little bit nourishing. Like I don't think that they have any nourishing benefits to them like not like a lip balm or anything, but just they're just that comfortable and they're not like sticky and I don't feel like you get that like goopy lip with them. So I just thought that this brown would pair quite nicely with some of the lipsticks that we're bringing in. And then I also, from Jeffree Star unfortunately, have this. Um, I think his line is just called The Gloss and this is in the shade Mouthful. So this is just like my most nude like pinky lip gloss. And I am trying to finish this off before the end of the year. I can see like in the ring light that I am down in between the words V and gloss. So like probably about halfway to go on this. I am going to take the stopper out when the time comes for that. But yeah, I've been wearing this a lot. It is really comfortable. I do have to give it that. Like it's a nice formula. Here it is on my hand. But it's just not a brand that I choose to support. So I want to get this worked out of my collection. And then the last gloss that I have, this is from last year's Fenty Beauty um, holiday set when they released like their gloss bombs. I am not, I am not going to purchase the Fenty Beauty gloss bomb set this year, I promise. So this is in the shade, is it Hot Chocolate Fantasy? I think, yeah, it's Hot Chocolate Fantasy. This one was my favorite from last year's set. So this is like a darker kind of gloss, but it has like these really pretty like kind of red, green, pink uh, glitters to it. It's just kind of shifty. It's just really fun. So all of these glosses that I have picked out do technically fall into like the brown family, I would say, but they're all a little bit different and I feel like I will get a good amount of use out of all of them, but I'm going to put more focus in on that Jeffree Star one simply because I do want to finish it up. So that wraps it up for this Shop My Stash. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below. Um, I don't know. What should you let me know down below? <laughs> oh, let me know your thoughts down below about the Milk Makeup Blur Stick or, I mean, or anything, like if you've tried anything, or um, the NYX uh, Banana Powder or the, if you've tried the Seraphine Botanicals Cream Blush Palette because those are three things that I have not yet tried. But like I said, you can let me know your thoughts and opinions on any of the makeup that I mentioned. So I thank you so much for making it till the end. I hope you're having a good day, a good night, or a good whatever. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.